So you want to make a Minecraft server, probably because you want to play Minecraft with your friends. Well, this is the complete guide on making a Minecraft server in 1.20.2. We're going to go over everything you need to know to get your server up and running. But first, I do want to talk about some limitations. This server is only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust. That's because anyone who joins this server will get your public IP address. And with that, they can do things like DDoS you, which basically means hit your internet offline, and even find out where you live down to your latitude and longitude two coordinates. On top of that, you're going to need a good PC. This is hosting a Minecraft server on your own computer, and it's also going to be using your own internet. So you're going to need a good PC and good internet in order to be able to reliably and sustainably host a Minecraft server. You're also going to have to port forward for this server, and generally it is good to have some tech skills. We're going to try to make things as easy and as simple as possible to walk everybody through this, but it can be a bit difficult. And luckily, there is a solution to all of these problems, and that's our company, Simple Game Hosting. You can check out Simple Game Hosting at the first... You can check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your own Minecraft server. At Simple Game Hosting, anyone can join your server. You can make your server public or private, and if you can join a server like Hypixel, you can join a Simple Game Hosting server. Literally, you just get the IP address and you can join it. It's that simple. But you can also customize your server more, adding mods, plugins, and mod packs if you want. Truthfully, it's up to you, and yes, you can even just host a vanilla server as well. You also don't have to worry about things like DDoS because DDoS protection is taken care of for you, and at Simple Game Hosting, you have high quality hardware, meaning you don't have to worry about server lag and anything like that. All of the hardware is taken care of for you. If you can play Minecraft, you can play on a Simple Game Hosting server, and the same goes for the internet connection. As long as you can join other Minecraft servers, you can join a Simple Game Hosting server. On top of all that, if you do have any issues managing your server along the way, we have expert live chat support and a high quality help center to help you answer questions that you may have with hosting your server. So if you want to start a Minecraft server this simple way, go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below the breakdown.xyz slash simple to get your server started. It truly is the easiest way to host a Minecraft server. But what if you want to start a server yourself? Sure, Simple Game Hosting may be easier and maybe the better solution, but if you want to start a server yourself, how can you do that? Well, we're going to go through everything here. And like I said, the goal is to cover every potential issue that you may have. First things first, we want to go ahead and go here. This is the second link in the description down below, and the guide you're watching now will be here once it's live, and this is our text guide on making a Minecraft server. It goes through everything from step-by-step -step instructions to getting your server up and running. Now, we're going to go through everything in this video as well, but I understand some people are text learners, some people are visual learners. They like video, some people like text. So here is a text option for those of you who like text, and if you like video, this video will work as well. Once you here, go ahead and click on the Download Minecraft button to be taken to the Minecraft Server download page. Here, what you want to do is find this, Download Minecraft Server 1.20.2.jar. Go ahead and click on that, and the jar file will begin downloading. You may need to keep or save this file depending on your browser. Now let's go ahead and minimize our browser, and what we want to do is move the file we just downloaded, that server.char, to our desktop. For me, that's going to be in the Downloads folder, but for you, it's going to be wherever your downloads typically go. Most likely the downloads folder, but maybe you've set it to somewhere else. Now let's go ahead and right click on our desktop and create a new folder. You can title this whatever you want. I'm going to title it Minecraft 1.20.2 server because that's what we're starting. Now go ahead and drag and drop the server.jar into our folder here. Now go ahead and open up the folder and all you need to do is double click on the server.jar. Except for some of you, double clicking it won't work. And the reason for that is because you need to download and install Java 17. Java 17 is required for Minecraft servers, and guess what? This is an in-depth guide on how to get it. It covers everything you need to know. It, of course, is linked in the description down below. It's pretty simple to get. Now, you still may not be able to double-click on that file after you've downloaded Java 17. And in that case, you need the jar fix. And what this is going to do is take all the jar files from your computer, including the server.jar, and link them back to Java 17. But make sure that you get Java 17 first, then run the jar fix. Otherwise, the jar fix won't work. So you want to get Java 17, run the jar fix, and then we'll be able to double click on this server.jar. Now, your server is going to attempt to start. It's going to generate some files and folders like this, but eventually it will fail and it just won't, it won't open. It won't start and nothing will happen. Except this, you'll get the eula.txt file. In order to start a server, we need to agree to the Minecraft eula, so let's go ahead and do exactly that. So we want to go to the eula here. I've done that already and I agree to it, so we're going to change eula equals false to eula equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. And then click File, Save, 
and then we can close out of the ULA.txt. Now let's go ahead and double click on the server.jar, and when we do that, it will start our Minecraft server. Now you might be like, that wasn't hard, and no, it wasn't, and getting to this point in your server is relatively easy. The hard part is allowing your friends to join because right now only you can join this server. Your friends cannot join your Minecraft server at this point. So what do we do in order to allow your friends to join? Well, we're going to need a port forward. But first, let's just make sure we can join this server. Get a quick win in here. And so I'm going to go ahead and open up Minecraft 1.20.2. And we're going to join this server really fast. And I would recommend you do that as well. Just make sure the server's working at this point. So here we are. Minecraft is open. Go ahead and go to multiplayer and proceed. And then once we're here, what we want to do is go ahead and click add server at the bottom. You can name it wherever you want. I'm going to name it our local server because you're the only person that can join the server using the method we're about to use. You can always use this method, but your friends will use your public IP after we've port forwarded. Don't get too stressed about that. We're going to cover all of it here after we join the server. What's the server address? Well, it's localhost. All one word, all lowercase, exactly like that. Like I said, you're the only person that can join this server because it's local. It's on localhost. Let's go ahead and click done here and boom, there is our local server. Double click on this and we will join right on in. You can see right on the left hand side, we have now joined the server. Things are good to go. Now, you're the only person that can join this way, but it's a good way to test things, make sure things are working. Wow, this is actually a really good cherry blossom seed. For those of you who are curious about it, I'll go ahead and uh, type it in right over there. There it is. But nevertheless, how do you allow your friends to join your server? Well, in order to do that, we will, of course, need to port forward. I've mentioned it a few times. So let's go ahead, disconnect from the server here, and then we'll go ahead and stop the server. To properly stop a server, always come over here, and this is the console, by the way, this is what we call the console, and type stop, right like so, and hit enter, and it will shut the server down properly. Now, I will say port forwarding is the most difficult part of this process and you do not have to do it at Simple Game Hosting. So if you do run into any issues, Simple Game Hosting is the easiest way to start a server. That's in the name. Simple is in the name and that's our goal. No port forwarding involved over there. So I do want to note that before we move on, let's go ahead and close out of Minecraft as well. Now, luckily, the server's here. We don't actually have to do anything in the server. This is all going to be on our router and in our network. But the first thing we need to do is get two numbers, our IPv4 address and our default gateway. So let's go ahead and open up our start menu here. And then we want to type in CMD and then open up command prompt. In command prompt, what we want to type is IP CONFIG, IP config, exactly like that, and hit enter. That then is going to give us a few different numbers here. As I said, we're interested in our IPv4 and our default gateway. So I'm going to open up Notepad and make note of these, but you could use any sort of note-taking program or, uh, you know, the old-fashioned way. A post-it note on your desk works fine too. So let's go ahead and get our IPv4 here, and we're going to go ahead and name this 192.168.1.25. There you go. We also want our default gateway. Now, the thing about the default gateway you might have two. You might have one on the first line here that's numbers and letters. And then under that, you'll have one that's just numbers. We want the one that's just numbers. It's going to be in the same format as mine. It may be different numbers, but you want the one that's just numbers, not the one that's numbers and letters. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.1. It's all we need. We've got our numbers. We can close out of the command prompt. This is all we need here. Let's go ahead and open up a brand new tab in our browser. And then in this new tab, we want to type in our default gateway, which is 192.168.1.1. A login box is going to pop up of some sort, right? For me, it looks like this. For you, it may be really nice and graphically customized. It might not just be a white box. It might be a pop-up. It might just be a login box in the center of your screen. Who knows? Some sort of login box is going to open up. Now, this is different than your Wi-Fi password. And in the description down below, we have this, a guide on how to find your router's password. It covers everything from method one to method four, five, start with method one and work through to a method five to find your router's username and password. It covers everything you need to know. And once you're finished, you will be able to log in to your router. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll meet you once I've logged in. So I've now logged into my router and this is what it looks like. Yours probably looks completely different and that's okay. I'm going to give you the common terms for port forwarding and what it might be in your router. But we also have this, of course, another guide in the description, but it is a guide on port forwarding. And the video at the top is what's especially worth looking at because it goes over the most popular routers out there today and how to port forward on them. So it covers everything you need to know about port forwarding on all the popular routers today it covers it all. Linksys, Netgear, Asus, it's all there. Once you've watched through that, and even if your router is not on that list, by the way, it might still be worth a quick listen just to pick up on the terms and potential locations because a lot of router software is very similar. 
But for me, on my Netgear router, it's going to be in advanced, and then it's in advanced again, and then it's in port forwarding slash port triggering. But what could it be for you? Well, it could be in apps and gaming. It could be in app forwarding. It could be in game forwarding. It could be in apps and gaming, which I think I've already said, but it might be in gaming and apps. It could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in the security tab, the advanced tab, the administration tab, the advanced administration tab, or in just port forwarding slash port triggering. It could also just be called port management. There's a ton of different stuff it could be called but just click around. You can't really break stuff in your router. Only save stuff that you know is port forwarding. The settings will be the same once you actually start port forwarding. And on top of all that, if you have any issues, it's super easy to factory reset a router. Usually there's just a little button you can push on the back of the router. So if you do break something entirely, you can just do that to fix it. Nevertheless, we found port forwarding on my router and I need to add a custom service for you. It might be add a port forward, new port forward, a plus button. You might just have a big long drop down list of different basically blank boxes for port forwarding if that's the case enter it into the first one now for service name or id in your port forward you just want to name this minecraft server you can really name it anything you want but just something that you're going to know what the port forward is for for protocol you want to select tcp slash udp udp slash tcp or both it literally may be the word both if for whatever reason you can't select both go ahead and select tcp do everything and then come back do this all again for UDP. I want to make sure both, both of them are selected though. And then for anything involving the word port, in our case, external port range, outside port range, first port, second port, internal port, inside port, doesn't matter. If it has the word port, P-O-R-T in it, you're going to enter in 25565. So we have external port, hey, 25565, because it's got the word port in it. For internal port, hey, you guessed it. The word port is there. So we want to enter in 25565, that number string there. That's the port that Minecraft uses. Now for our internal or local IP address, this is going to be the IP address we found earlier, our IPv4 address. So 192.168.1.25 in my case. Now you may have a big long drop down list of different devices on your network. I actually have that too. And I could select my device here as well and that would work just the same. So either select the device you're starting this over on or enter in your internal IP v4 address if it asks for that. Now that's going to cover 90% of people but for 10% you'll want an outside IP for your port forward. Well guess what everyone watching this video needs an external or outside IP address because that's how their friends are going to join their Minecraft server. So everybody who's watching the video let's go get our IP address so we can join our server. But also make sure you save or apply or keep your port forward as well. How do you find your IP address? Well, we have a link in the description down below that will take you here. This is what's your IP and it just gives it back to you. It just takes your IP and gives your IP right back to you. Now, it also shows why it's important to not give this out to anybody and everybody. You can see where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates, your city, your region, your country, all of that can be gotten from your IP address. So keep that in mind. And by the way, you don't have to do any of this at Simple Game Hosting. It's all kept, well, with just you because the server's hosted on their hardware. So nevertheless, go ahead and copy that. And then what we want to do is come back to our port forward if we needed that IP address. Most of you didn't, but for those of you that did need that external IP address, enter that in here. And now we can minimize our browser. It's time to start our server. To start your server, you're just going to double click on that server.jar. That's how you're going to start your server every time you want to start it. Double click on that and it will start right on up. Now we also want to open up Minecraft, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I will meet you on the main menu to join this server, this time via the public IP, just like our friends would join the server. So here we are, Minecraft and the Minecraft server are started. Let's go ahead and click on multiplayer, click proceed, and we can go ahead and add another server. This time we're going to name it our public IP, because this is using our public IP, and paste that in for the server address. Now you can see 4.3 here, that's the same one that was on the page earlier. The reason you can only see that last number is because, well, you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. That includes everyone on the internet. So we have covered that up except for those last digits. That way you know that it is the same IP that I was grabbing earlier. No trickery involved or anything, but it's still private. So we can go ahead and click done there. And then we have both of these. We have the local server and the public IP. These are the same server. One uses local host, one uses the public IP. Now for me, I know if I double click on this, it's going to join right on in. You'll be able to see right there it is on the left hand side, Nick's Games. But you may not be able to do what I just did. And that's actually relatively normal. What you're doing when you join your server via the public IP is connecting back to yourself. 
that's a bit weird. And a lot of internet service providers just don't like that. So they block it. They don't allow it to happen. But you can always join via that local host connection we covered earlier. So that's why it's important that your friends join via the public IP, but it's not important that you do. So if you can't join via the public IP, that's perfectly fine. Your friends are all that have to join using the public IP. But what if they can't even join via the public IP? Well, we've got solutions. One of which being that you might need to allow them through Windows Defender. And we have a guide in the description on how to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall for Minecraft servers. This goes over everything you need to know to make sure that your friends are allowed onto your server by your firewall. It could be another firewall on your router or an antivirus blocking it, but generally it is Windows Defender and this guide covers it. Helped over 300,000 people with this issue. As we can see here, I tried so many fixes for this problem. None of them worked except for this one. Well, we're happy to help and this will help you as well, assuming your friends can't join. But just in case it doesn't, we do have this guide as well, which is how to fix a broken Minecraft server. It covers everything you need to know. It's a 21 minute video of me troubleshooting tons of different potential issues with Minecraft servers and how to fix them. It goes over everything and to ensure that you get your server fixed if you do run into any issues. And lastly, we have this guide, which is how to add RAM to a Minecraft server. It covers how to do, well, that, add RAM to your Minecraft server. It goes over all that and make sure you're set and good to go with adding more RAM to it. But nevertheless, that is how you can make a Minecraft server. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Enjoy your brand new server. Enjoy playing Minecraft with your friends, and we'll see you in the next video. I am out. Peace.